The Mandalorian Season 3 is right around the corner. I think at this point we're all aware that our story will see Din Djarin and Grogu venture to the planet Mandalore, Din seeking retribution for removing his helmet during Season 2's finale. According to the Armorer and the Children of the Watch's Creed, after removing his helmet and revealing his face, he is a Mandalorian no more. One may only be redeemed in the living waters beneath the mines of the planet Mandalore. However, the mines were all destroyed. In fact, most of the planet was desecrated at the hands of the Galactic Empire during the Great Mandalorian Purge on the Night of a Thousand Tears. But what awaits Din Djarin on the planet Mandalore, and why did the Empire turn the planet to glass? Let's talk about it. Before we get to the Great Mandalorian Purge, we're going to need a refresh of Mandalore's storied past. The planet Mandalore was located in the Outer Rim territories of the galaxy. Mandalore is about three quarters the size of Earth, and like our planet, was once covered in lush jungles, forests, seas, and mountains. The planet was of course home to the Mandalorians. Not a race, but a clan-based group, all bound by a common creed, language, and code. They played a particularly important role in galactic history as legendary warriors with a fearsome reputation as conquerors, as well as mercenaries and bounty hunters. The Mandalorian's way of life revolved around honor and war, being led by a sole ruler known as the Mandalore. The Mandalore system was also the exclusive home to one of the strongest metals in the Star Wars galaxy, Beskar. The purest form of Beskar was even capable of repelling the strikes of a lightsaber for brief amounts of time and could withstand direct blaster fire. Ancient Mandalorians fought in many conflicts, often against the ancient Jedi Order, being one of few groups able to hold their own against Force users. One famous Mandalorian, Tar Vizsla, was an exception however, having been the first and only Mandalorian we know of to be inducted into the Jedi Order, where he constructed the Darksaber, the black-bladed weapon that would go on to represent leadership within Mandalorian culture and is now in the hands of Din Djarin. After centuries of warfare both with the Jedi Order and amongst themselves, the once beautiful surface of Mandalore was reduced to an endless desert. This forced Mandalorians to reside in biodome cities like the capital of Sundari. Kaldabe, the former capital, was destroyed during the year-long Mandalorian Civil War. That conflict, which served as a tipping point, was fought between the new Mandalorian peace movement and Mandalore's martial traditionalists who believed in the warrior ways of the past. Following this conflict, Mandalore exiled their remaining warriors to their moon of Concordia, where they were believed to have died out sometime later. Meanwhile, the new Mandalorians, led by Duchess Satine Kreez, constructed and peacefully inhabited insulated biocube cities on their ruined homeworld. Unknown to Satine, the warriors had survived and formed the Death Watch under the leadership of Pre Vizsla, who was the leader of Clan Vizsla, having been a direct descendant of Tar Vizsla. Pre Vizsla was also the current holder of the Darksaber. At this point, the Separatist Crisis broke out and the Clone Wars began between the Republic and Confederacy of Independent Systems. Despite some ties between Satine and the Jedi, especially Obi-Wan Kenobi, Mandalore remained neutral during the Clone Wars. This wouldn't keep the planet's population safe, however, as Pre Vizsla's Death Watch emerged from the shadows of Concordia, aligning themselves with Count Dooku's CIS for a short period and attempted to take control of the planet, staging various terrorist attacks and attempts on Satine's life. Despite this, Satine continued to stall Mandalore's involvement in the Clone Wars and thwarted a black market set up by the planet's own Prime Minister Almec. In the later years of the Clone Wars, Death Watch again attempted to conquer Mandalore. This time, they had the aid of the former Sith Lord Maul and his brother Savage Opress, as well as their collection of crime families known as the Shadow Collective. Vizsla and Maul orchestrated a series of attacks which made Maul's forces, consisting of Savage, the Pike Syndicate, and the Black Sun, conduct attacks on numerous key locations on the planet. Death Watch Mandalorians would then swoop in to appear to be saving the day. This caused mass panic throughout the streets as citizens feared for their lives. Public opinion turned in Death Watch's favor and Vizsla was made the new Prime Minister and Mandalore. This wouldn't last long as the former Sith Lord and Vizsla began to disagree on their next move, 
culminating in a one-on-one -on -one duel in which Maul took Vizsla's head, his seat on the Mandalorian throne, and the Darksaber. Maul then reappointed Almec to be the planet's prime minister in order to sway public opinion and cover for Maul's role in Vizsla's death. At this point, a group of Death Watch Mandalorians, led by Bo-Katan Kryze, sister of Satine, rebelled against Maul, believing an outsider could never sit upon the Mandalorian throne. Maul captured Obi-Wan Kenobi and killed Satine, essentially his Padme, right in front of him, then imprisoning the Jedi and having his revenge for Kenobi cutting him in half during their duel on Naboo. His time on top wouldn't last long, however, as his former master, Darth Sidious, showed up. Palpatine began to see Maul as a threat and needed to cut him down to size. The Dark Lord killed Sauvage and took Maul as a prisoner. In the Son of Dathomir comics, which is based upon an unproduced Clone Wars arc, Maul's Mandalorian Super Commandos, or as I like to call them, Maldalorians, busted him out. After these events, Maul and his forces returned to Mandalore, which remained under the rule of Almec as Maul's puppet. During the final days of the Clone Wars, Bo-Katan and the former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano informed the Jedi of Maul's presence on the planet. A joint force of Bo-Katan's Mandalorian loyalists and the Republic's 332nd Company of Clone Troopers was organized and the Siege of Mandalore began. This is all happening just as Revenge of the Sith is beginning. Eventually, the siege was a success. Lady Bo-Katan gained control of Mandalore, and Ahsoka was to transport the captured Maul to the Jedi on Coruscant. The victory would be short-lived, as a great shift was about to occur across the galaxy. Order 66 was issued, and the Republic began to transition into the Galactic Empire. Originally, after the siege was complete, the Republic's clone troopers had agreed to leave Mandalore. Now things had changed, and the Empire wanted to occupy the planet. Bo-Katan resisted this and refused to do the Empire's bidding. Therefore, she was forced out of power and replaced by Gar Saxon, Maul's former right hand. The now Viceroy Saxon was backed up by the Imperial Super Commandos, now serving as his enforcers. The Empire established an Imperial Academy on Mandalore for training military cadets. One notable Imperial cadet was Sabine Wren, whose mechanical talents were used to build the arc pulse generator known as the Duchess. The Duchess was capable of reacting with the Beskar alloy inside Mandalorian armor and therefore incinerating Mandalorian warriors. Sabine spoke out against the Empire, but her family and Clan Wren sided with the Empire and cast her out. This eventually led to Sabine joining the Spectre Rebel Cell, which caused her father to be made a hostage of Saxons on Mandalore. Saxon ruled Mandalore until two years before the events of A New Hope, so around 17 years. His death came at the hands of Sabine's mother, Ursa. This led to yet another Mandalorian civil war, pitting Clan Wren against Clan Saxon, now led by Gar Saxon's younger brother, Tiber. Clan Saxon would put the Duchess weapon to use, before Sabine led a strike team to destroy it. The resulting explosion also destroyed Saxon's Imperial Star Destroyer, presumably killing him. Clan Wren and other Mandalorian clans then again pledged allegiance to Bo-Katan, who was gifted the Darksaber from Sabine, and was set to lead Mandalore. Realizing they would never be able to control Mandalore, and wanting to make sure no other faction did, the Empire launched the Great Purge of Mandalore. Bo-Katan and her people attempted to fight back, but it would be in vain. The Empire's ruthless tactics and greater numbers were just too much. Palpatine knew how dangerous the Mandalorians would be if they remained organized and perhaps joined the Rebel Alliance. The Purge led to the near total genocide of the Mandalorian people in what was later known as the Night of a Thousand Tears. The minds of Mandalore were destroyed, and Mandalorian cities, including Sundari, were devastated. TIE bombers laid waste to the surface, while KX security droids and Viper probe droids killed any survivors with the surface of the planet assumed to be completely uninhabitable. We learned from Imperial Moff Gideon, who participated and led the Purge, that at one point, gunships outfitted with heavy repeating blasters attacked fields occupied by Mandalorian recruits. Somehow, during the siege, Gideon also acquired the Darksaber from Bo-Katan. Perhaps we'll find out how in The Mandalorian Season 3. The Purge scattered any surviving Mandalorians, like Bo-Katan and several of her Night Owls, across the galaxy. One group of Mandalorians which survived was Din Djarin's Children of the Watch, as they were based on Concordia. 
As spoils of their victory, the Empire gathered Mandalorian Beskar and cast the metal into Imperial ingots. After the events of the Great Purge, Mandalore appears to be abandoned. Bo-Katan continues to lead Clan Krees, as well as the Night Owl subdivision. Together with Axe Woves and Koska Reeves, she went on missions with the intent of reclaiming the planet Mandalore. Instead of again taking the Darksaber as a gift from anyone who managed to acquire it, she planned on taking the Darksaber from Gideon in combat to cement her rule as legitimate. This of course was prior to Din Djarin unknowingly winning the Darksaber's rights in combat with Moff Gideon. Boba Fett, although not a Mandalorian by creed, but the son of the foundling Jango Fett, was critical of Bo-Katan's aspirations, saying the Empire turned the planet to glass. Even Din Djarin was shocked at first, having been told by the Children of the Watch that Mandalore was cursed. The Armorer even claimed the Purge to be prophesized, brought upon by the fact that Bo-Katan was gifted the Darksaber by Sabine and didn't deserve it, not having won its rights in combat. But how will things turn out in the end? Will Bo-Katan or Din Djarin sit upon Mandalore's throne by the end of The Mandalorian Season 3? Will Din be redeemed? Or will his point of view change regarding what it means to be a Mandalorian? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. But that does it for today's Mandalorian lore video. If you did enjoy, make sure to click the like button and subscribe if you are new to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.